teachers. It's Sam from New Line here. In this video, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite tools on your New Line panel, the New Line Classroom Tools. So these tools are actually located right here on your home screen. You'll see this little yellow icon here in the bottom left hand corner with a pencil and a ruler. If we tap on those New Line Classroom Tools, it's actually going to open up a little widget up in the top left hand corner of your panel. I like to refer to this as my classroom management buddy. Now this widget is totally movable. So if I take one finger, touch the widget and drag, I can actually move this to anywhere on my panel that I want it to go. Now there are a ton of tools built in here. So we're gonna walk through them just so you're aware of what you have access to here. And then we'll talk about another cool feature of the classroom tools. So the very first option here in our classroom tools is two little speech bubbles. That is our instruction. So these are a couple of pre-created instructions that you could put up on the screen for your students so that they're aware of what your expectations are. So for this example, I'm going to use working together. Now, the nice thing about the classroom tools is you can actually stack multiple classroom tools together by selecting these three horizontal lines in the top left-hand corner. Now, say I want to add the traffic light. This is what I'm going to use to let my students know their voice level. So since we're working together, I'm not going to have them at no talking, but I'm also not going to have them at, you know, full volume. I'm going to put them here on yellow for whisper. If I wanted to, I could of course add additional widgets to this as well. So if I go back to those three horizontal lines, I also have dice. That's going to allow me to add up to six dice and I can actually roll them on the screen. So this is great for math games. Maybe you're having indoor recess and you wanna play Yahtzee. You have access to this dice set here. Now, when I'm done with a widget, say I've opened it up temporarily, now I'm done with those dice each one will have a little X in the top right-hand corner. If I touch that X button, it's gonna close that out and take me right back to my other two options. Now, in addition, I also have this QR code generator. Now, what that does is it's going to allow you to input a URL. So say you're having some sort of web-based assignment for your students today, and instead of waiting for them to type it out or to type in a bit.ly, you want to type in the URL here and then just have them scan that QR code with their device to access it. So that's a super fun one, makes your day a little bit easier. I also have things like a timer. That is a super popular one for our teachers. This will allow you to set a custom timer and you can actually change the sound that will play when the timer is done. So if you do want to customize your sound, there's going to be a little music note in the top left hand corner. And I have four different ringtones uh, or ringers that I can choose from. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. And when I hit play, you're going to see that timer kind of counting down. So this is a really great visual representation of what my expectations for my students are during maybe this group activity um, or guided practice work with whatever we're working on. So I'm going to go ahead and pause that timer, but it will play down to zero uh, if you're using it in your classroom. And I could always delete this timer if I want to change it to a different number of minutes or seconds, depending on my activity. Maybe you need to add a little bit of extra time at the end. That trash can down there in the bottom will allow you to choose a new time. I also have a stopwatch. So if you're doing any kind of races, you're trying to see who's getting done the fastest, you also have a stopwatch here. I've got the play button to start the timer. I have a lap option as well as a reset. So I do have a stopwatch function there as well. I do also have access to a calendar and a clock. So if I wanna work on calendar with my students, I do have a calendar that I can pull up super easily right on my classroom tools. And I can of course change the month there as well. And then here is our world clock. So you'll notice right now, my clock is in 24 hour time. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always worked with my students using 12 hour time. So if I wanted to put this in our general 12 hour time format, I would just tap this 24 in the top left hand corner, and then it's gonna go ahead and change to that 12 hour time. Now this is a world clock, so I can change the location as well. Right now we're in New York. I could go in and change this to Chicago which is of course us in central time, me in Texas. So I could go in and change that to a different area as well if you are not in the Eastern time zone. I'm gonna go ahead and close these guys out and go back 
into my menu. Now, this zoom in tool is one of the most popular because it allows you to do really two really cool things. One, when I tap on zoom in, you're gonna notice that I get this bar on the screen here. This bar is movable so I can move it up out of my way. One of the reasons I love the zoom in feature is not because it allows me to press this plus sign and zoom in on the screen. The reason that I love the zoom in feature is because it also freezes my screen for me. So if I need to freeze whatever is being displayed, I could open the zoom in feature. Now that screen is frozen, but I do also have the ability, of course, to zoom in and out using this toolbar. So a really handy tool there to know you have access to. I also have a spotlight tool. So anytime you're working with your students and you need to highlight different things on your panel, you have this spotlight tool. And it does have both a circular shape and a rectangular or square shape. So if I wanted to make this a rectangle and I just wanted to show these options, I could go ahead and drag to change the size of this. With my circular shape, it's always gonna stay a circle, but I have this little arrow in the bottom right-hand corner that if I touch and drag, is going to make that circle bigger or smaller. One of my favorite ways to use this is if I'm giving something like an assessment and maybe I only want my students to be able to see the time, I could hide everything on that screen except for the time so that they're not distracted by anything on my new line panel. The other cool thing I can do with this is right now everything is blacked out. If I was doing something like following along on the web and I needed them to click the same things on their device that I was clicking on my panel, I have this slider over here in this bottom left-hand corner. If I drag this slider to the left, it's going to change the transparency of the background. So I could say, first, we're gonna click here, then we're gonna come over and click here, or you know whatever I'm trying to show my students at that time. So that transparency is super cool and it is a little bit more customizable for you. When you are done with the Spotlight tool, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna see a door icon. Now in New Line Land, if you don't see an exit button or an X, look for a door. That is going to be your exit option. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap my door icon here. And that is going to bring me back to my classroom tools. Right next to the spotlight, we also have a curtain tool. That is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to put a curtain over anything that's on my new line panel. So it's going to go over top of whatever I have pulled up. Say I have an exciting announcement. I want to wait till all my kiddos are in the room together, or I'm just trying to start my day off with a little bit of excitement. When I'm ready to reveal what's behind it, I'm going to tap one of these yellow arrows and it's gonna go ahead and reveal whatever I have up on my screen. So that's a really fun one as well. We talked about our world clock already. And then the very last option is our spinner tool. Now the spinner is super cool, but there's a couple things I want you to know about this spinner. This spinner has a maximum of 12 sections. And I know most of you probably have more than 12 students in your classroom. So one way that I recommend to people to use this is to name say I've got five groups in my class, to give each table a group name like apple, banana, strawberry, whatever it may be. And instead of then having a space for each individual student, I have my groups going or I've identified a different area in my station rotation as apple or banana so that my kiddos know where to go. Even though you only get 12 sections, the sections are customizable. So if I did wanna change those names, I could take one finger and press and hold on the text of a section. And you'll notice I get this little text box that pops up, I chose banana. If I tap next to banana, my touch keyboard is gonna come up and that's going to allow me to change the name. Now, the other thing to know about this spinner is that even though yes, you get the 12 sections and they are customizable, when you turn your panel off and back on or you close out of your classroom tools at the end of the day, that spinner is going to reset. So don't spend a whole lot of time going in and changing the names every day because it is going to reset at, after your panel turns off and back on or you close out of your classroom tools. So just something for you guys to be aware of there. But the classroom tools are fun. They have a lot of great options for you guys to utilize in your classroom, whether it be classroom management or just things you want to pop up on the screen to make your day a little bit more exciting. The classroom tools are a great solution for that. Now, the best part about the classroom tools is that they go 
anywhere you go on your new line panel. They are an overlay, meaning they're just sitting on top of the screen right now. So if I was to go somewhere like Google Chrome, my classroom tools are gonna go with me. If I was to go somewhere like Google Drive, they're gonna go with me. That also includes if you have your computer connected physically with an HDMI or USB-C, that will sit on top of your connected source. If you're wireless casting, it's gonna show up on top of your cast session. Now, as you're using this, you'll notice the more stuff I add, the bigger it gets. So if I wanna get this out of the way, say I'm teaching a lesson and I need to move it so that it's not covering up all of my slides. In this top right-hand corner here, you're gonna see two arrows pointing toward each other. If I press those two arrows, it's going to minimize my classroom tools into this teeny tiny little icon. I can move that up and out of the way, go through my lesson, and when I'm ready for my expectations, I can tap that icon, and they are exactly how I left them. So I have a lot of teachers that will open this up, get it set up right in the morning, and then they just minimize and maximize throughout the day as needed. So a really great tool for you to have in your arsenal that comes built right into your new line panel. When I'm done with this for the day, say I don't want to minimize, I just want to close out, you'll see that little door icon in the top right-hand corner, and we'll hit exit. Now, I know we talked about accessing those classroom tools from your panel's home screen, but there is another way that you can access them as well if you don't happen to be on the home screen of your new line panel. On your side toolbar here on the right-hand side, we have a little toolbox icon. If we tap on that toolbox, you'll see the very first option here is classroom tools. So if I tap on classroom tools, I'll get that same little widget over there in the top corner. So two ways to open, just depending on what works best for you.